Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're going to be looking at an iPad mini that I got for $45. Should you still buy one? So firstly, I bought this iPad for again $45, which I think was a heck of a deal. Unfortunately, what I traded for that low price was a cracked screen. Put in practical use, I hardly notice it, and while it does look a little ugly if you're, you know, staring at it, it's not actually too bad. So sorry that some of the B-roll is going to be, you know, not the nicest looking because of the crack, not a lot I could do about it. So again, this is the first generation iPad mini and was originally released in November of 2009. 12. This device is already 5 years old. It originally shipped with iOS 6 but is upgradable to iOS 9.3.5, which we will talk about. <laughs> It came in the colors white and silver, black and slate, and space gray, which was uh, released in the model the next year. So essentially they re-released the iPad mini 1 the next year, just with space gray instead of black and slate. That is the model I have here. This iPad is super thin and light at 308 grams and 7.2 millimeters thick. It is so comfortable to hold and to use. Uh, I can't really express that enough. It came in either 16, 32, or 64 gigabytes storage options. I have here the 16 gigabyte and if you're looking to pick one up that's actually the one I would recommend. What? 16 gigabytes? That doesn't sound like me. That's usually not enough space, right? Well, on an iPad I would actually say 16 gigabytes is gonna be fine unless you're taking a lot of pictures for some reason or you have a tendency to download in a lot of apps or maybe download movies to your iPad. Anything where you're gonna be using a lot of space I would get a higher storage. But for me who just mostly streams from their iPad 16 gigabytes is actually perfectly fine. It does have the lightning port which uh, actually was new the year it was released so that's nice and it also has the glorious headphone jack look at that thing it's so 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 beautiful mm, love it the ipad mini rocks a 7.9 inch display which is unfortunately non-retina with a resolution of 768 by 1024 or 162 ppi so the screen is not great you can see pixels uh but you know it's still livable not super sharp but not super bad either even so so a retina display would have been nice considering this was released in 2012. The iPad 4 was released that year and it had a retina display so they definitely could have done it but they didn't. Even so, it still looks all right. So you can see here compared to the iPad 2, and you'll notice that it is quite a bit smaller than the iPad 2. I say the iPad 2 because when it comes to specs, it's about the equivalent. And here I have it beside my new iPhone 6 Plus to give you kind of a perspective of how big it is compared to, you know, iPhones. And so yeah, I think it's a really good size personally. It's called Mini for a reason. It's a small tablet and I really like it. It's actually probably the best size for me uh, the normal iPad's okay, but this is just easier to bring around and use. Honestly, when it comes to it, I'm surprised how much I'm loving the form factor on this thing. Not only that, but it is a very classic Apple design and it looks really good. There is no Touch ID, unfortunately, on this iPad, but I can't blame it for that because that wasn't even released till 2013 and the iPad mini didn't really get that till I think 2014 with the iPad mini 3. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's when it happened. So when it comes to the camera, uh, take a pass just leave don't even don't know it is 5 megapixels and can film 1080p video uh, but it's not very good to be fair you should never be getting a tablet for the camera your phone is almost always going to be better honestly new phones are so good with the cameras it's ridiculous even the lower end of like you know commonly used smartphones like the iPhone 6 or 5s have like pretty good cameras and you know 6s and above or SC and above uh, really really good cameras so you know why would you use your iPad for a camera the front-facing camera is even worse with 1.2 megapixels and 720p video recording this might be a little bit of a bigger deal for you because while it might be okay for FaceTime or Skype calls if you're somebody who likes to take selfies I would take a hard pass or even snapchat you know your pictures probably aren't gonna look that great 
Honestly, tablets have never been known for their amazing cameras, so I don't think we should judge it too harshly. Battery life when it comes to the iPad mini is surprisingly decent. The battery is sized at 4,490 milliamps, which isn't bad by any means, and will last you the day without issue unless you're using the device a lot. So no complaints here. The iPad mini holds Apple's A5 chipset and 512 megabytes of RAM, which is where we get to the really bad part of the device. The processor is dual core, which is why it's able to run up to iOS 9, but the low amount of RAM really holds this thing back. Don't get me wrong, this thing flew on iOS 6 back in the day, or even iOS 7, and I would say it wasn't too bad either. But when Apple updated the iPad to iOS 9, it kind of killed it, as it's ridiculously painful to use now. It might not look that bad on the screen here, but trust me, using this in person, it's, it's painful. While it's slightly better than the 4S in my experience, it's still pretty bad. Apps are laggy, there are constant stutters in basically everything I do, and overall it's just not a good user experience. You know, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm so disappointed Apple, uh, <laughs> Apple made this huge mistake by letting them update. If planned obsolescence is a thing, this is probably the biggest proof of it right here. There are a few ways to help speed it up, such as reduce motion and reduce transparency and accessibility under general in the settings, but for the most part I often find myself getting frustrated while using this iPad. So if you get this iPad, I totally would recommend using those features as it does help. Not a lot, but you know, enough to notice. Also, I would recommend turning off spotlights, um, which, you know, I'm not gonna go into that. If you guys wanna see a video on how to speed iOS 9 up, maybe you're on that device, let me know in the comments below and maybe I'll do one. One thing that does immensely help this device uh, when it comes to whether or not you should buy it is the fact that it's very easy to jailbreak. It's not the best jailbreak in the world because you do have to rerun it every time it reboots, but it's still not bad at all. With it, you can install the Tweak Speed Intensifier, which helps a lot with speeding up animations and whatnot. That's why it seems a little bit faster on here, is because I have sped up all the animations. Plus, if you're into the whole jailbreaking thing, this isn't a bad device to get into because iOS 9.3.5 and below all have jailbreaks now, which means any iPad mini you get will be jailbreakable. And with that, you can actually install Cool Booter and Dual Boot with iOS 6 if you want to, which I won't show here, uh, but I might do at some point in the future if you guys want me to. So at the end of the day, is the iPad mini still worth buying? Um, probably not. You know, I like the device and all, but pro probably not. It does come at a very cheap price point though on ebay.com, usually at around $80 to $100 for a pretty good condition 16 gigabyte model. If you pay close attention, you might even be able to get it cheaper. If you're looking for a device with the basics such as YouTube and Netflix, this might be the one for you, as although it doesn't have a retina display, video still looks decent on it. I've been using it mostly for that, and so far it's actually been really nice because of that awesome size. Speakers are also pretty good if that interests you. When it comes to social media, I take a pass, as not only is the selfie camera pretty bad, but it legs like crazy when it comes to things like that. Yeah, that's the general message I'm kind of pushing here, is the iPad is just too slow. It's all because of iOS 9.3.5. The benefit of this is that you can install like all of the modern apps pretty much. Uh, most apps will support iOS 9 for about another year. There's some here and there that you know you need iOS 10 for, but for the most part, pretty much anything will run on it. And as you can see here, I have the most current version of YouTube. So, you know, that's actually a big positive if you think about it like that. So no, I wouldn't buy the iPad mini first generation. I mean, actually I did, but I don't think you should buy it. <laughs> it's just too slow on iOS 9 to be worth it in my opinion when you can get an iPad mini 2 for only about $50 to maybe $80 more. That device is much better and is capable of running iOS 11, so if you want to see a video about the iPad mini 2, let me know. If you have the iPad mini and you use it frequently, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you're not a power user though and you know, you're okay with some slowdown just because of that cheap price point, then yeah, maybe this is the tablet for you. All right, I think that's about it for this video. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do, so thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Give me a follow on Instagram at 91.tech if you're into, you know, tech stuff. Like if you found this video helpful or interesting. And with that all being said, thanks again, and I will see you all next time.